exit Barney McGee, soon to be a major motion picture. No. Don't yeah, no. just kidding. Throw it away. This is the breadwinner, which is a major motion picture, which brings us today to the topic of weeding the classroom collection. So let's start with some of the really obvious things. And I do appreciate that uh, teachers have a really difficult time, right, Scott? They have yes. a difficult time getting rid of stuff. <laughs> yes. So being sensitive to that, we'll start with the stuff, with the books that you know, should really be gone. You don't need uh, the library staff to come in and help you get rid of this. So, for example, let's take a look at this one here. Okay. So the books are, you know, the book is is looks basically great looks great, and then inside the the pages are falling apart, right? So that's a yes. really obvious one. That cannot be repaired. It's just too damaged. So what you can do with that is because it does have our barcode on, um, you don't need to send the whole book back. Just take off the cover, and just you can take off the cover now, and it's like, yep. oh, sharp intake of breath, he's pulling the book apart, right? Yeah. So just take that off, and either just cut off the bar barcode or send the whole thing back in the TDSB interoffice mail. So the next thing we're looking at is this. Again, you know, well it's used, not, well it's read, well used, right? Which is great. Yeah, but the cover, but. like the cover is really damaged, so that needs to go, right? Yes. Uh, so that's that needs to come back to the library and uh, yeah, and we'll be, just uh, discard it out of the yeah, system. Yeah, we'll just take it out of the system and then you know it's gone. We'll get you a new one if you want to. So this is you know still a classic oh. and still used. We still get requests, but you know it's really not a good idea to have this nasty old thing on your shelf and be handing it to students. If you're still using this book, um, just send this one back and. Uh, we will get a new book. And then, of course, you know, this type of thing where all is left <laughs> is the actual Please cover. send it back because it has the barcode. <laughs> right, and, and we, we can take to, it out of the system. Right, so let's take a look, Scott, at the second level here. So the damaged ones are the beginning. And this one is both, like, really damaged and really old. But if yeah. you look at some of these other titles here, um, I do not think you need us or our advice to really go and take a look at your shelves. And if you're finding anything like this, you don't need our permission or anybody's approval to really take this stuff off the shelf. You know, I do understand that people have a hard time, teachers in particular have a hard time getting rid of books. And they have a tendency to hang on to books way past um, the popularity. So, for example, uh, you were saying, Scott, Twilight. Twilight, right? Twilight was, was huge a few years ago. No one's reading Twilight anymore. Yeah. You don't get a lot of demand either from, for, for uh, Harry Potter, right? Not as much, no. Yeah, so, you know, we found things like this on the shelf, Dinah and the Green Fat Kingdom. You know, I don't know when that was in that was popular. <laughs> I took off that recently. So the ones that we're seeing this year, you know, that are hugely popular are this one, the Hate You Give, the Breadwinner, um, the Marrow Thieves has been big, Kim's Convenience also. Um, this is always a really popular one, the coldest winter ever, the Handmaid's Tale. Um, the Outside Circle was very popular. A new title, A Girl Called Echo, and uh, we just recently got a request for this, and of course, uh, Scarborough. Every classroom collection should include a wide variety of material, of reading materials, that are current, up-to-date, and in really good condition, and appealing to the kids. So this will include fiction, non-fiction, Graphic books, how-to manuals, and what else? What am I missing, Scott? Uh, don't forget the magazines, comic books, and superheroes. Yeah, absolutely. So let's take a look at the textbooks now. Uh, some of these textbooks are really, really obvious. You do not need the library to come and help you pull this type of thing off your shelves. You know, if it was published um, in 1975, really, you, no. you know, I think you're safe in getting rid of it. And 
Ontario, we're expected to use the Trillium list as our guide. So if you're teaching a course, check the Trillium list and um, find out if, your, if there are textbooks listed on, on the Trillium list for your particular course. Those are the textbooks that you need to be using. Sometimes teachers will use things for reference for a variety of reasons. Um, unless you're comparing then and now, really anything that you have on your, on your shelf before 2005 you need to get rid of. So here's a good example. This is travel, Mass Media and Popular Culture, published in, if you look here, it was published in, two, uh, sorry, 1996, right? 1996. 1996. So that's, think about it, people. Mass Media and Popular Culture. It's changed a lot from, in the last yeah, year. I think it might have changed since 1996. Since 22 years ago. And this other one we're also finding on shelves, Travel Crest, published in when? This one. Was published in Long before TripAdvisor, that's for it was sure. Published in okay. 2001. So you really need to get that stuff off the shelf. Do, don't feel the, that uh, you need our permission to do that. Just go there today and uh, <laughs> after this blog is finished and take it off. The history books um, in particular have created a lot of confusion because people are not sure what they can be using. So there's a big pile of them here. We're just going to go through them. If you have these on your shelf, you need to send them back. Canada Face of a Nation. Canada, a nation on folding. Uh, Spotlight Canada. Uh, Canada, a growing concern. Discovering Canada. Yep. And Canadian history, a sense of time. Two history books we generally provide for grade 10 history are History Uncovered, which is the applied course, and Canadian Sources Investigated, which is the academic course. Mathematics textbooks that we have been taken, uh, taking out of classrooms are the Applying the Concepts. So that's Applying the Concepts Grade 9 and Applying the Concepts Grade 10. So instead of these two uh, Grade 9 text and Grade 9 and 10 textbooks, you should be using Foundations of Mathematics 9 and Foundations of Mathematics 10. A number of civics books we're still finding on shelves. This one, uh, Act of Citizen. Civics, Canadian Civics, Citizenship in Action, and Civics Today. These are no longer on the Trillium list, so they need to be gone. This is the most current civics textbook listed on the Trillium list from 2017, Civics in Action from McGraw Hill. And we also supply a uh, civics from Oxford University Press. If you're teaching grade 9 English, here are some uh, textbooks you should have in your classroom. That would be the Nelson Literacy at 9 and 10. So hold them up, this Scott, so we 10. can see them, right? Mm -hmm. And also the set of Live Ink. So there's a, I think there are six in this series, right? So there's, uh, don't label me, yeah. upload, yep. <laughs> heroes or zeros, out loud. What's your problem? And did I miss anything there? So these also come with a great um, online teacher's guide that if you haven't already, we should be coming by in the next couple of months to do an inventory on your class. Just uh, do us a favor and get rid of some of this um, really awful, nasty stuff um, that we're still finding on shelves in classrooms. Before we get there. Yeah, before we be get there. Help. That would be a huge help. Huge help. Thanks so much for watching this vlog. See you next time.